What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. And today we're starting things off with some marquee matchups. I actually did these before um, the last episode that you saw, but because I did it live, um, it's, uh, it's in this video. And I think a lot of people enjoyed the live episode. I was very surprised by the response. It was like 45 minutes of me building one team. It was genuinely a, a horror show. Uh, of a video, but people seem to love it. So I'm definitely gonna do more of that in the future guys If you guys are enjoying those long videos those live videos, uh, I'll definitely do more of that For today's episode. I've got some gameplay. Obviously we built a new team in the last episode I, I still needed to change some players and the idea was that when I get the rewards um, Tomorrow we will be getting some uh, we'll be get, we'll, we'll pick up our, our, our new players essentially, you know, um, so happy with that um I bought Ronaldo, of course, as you guys may know, and I thought, let me try him out. I was interested. I went straight into Division 1. Um, my idea was to see how the team that I had played and what I immediately needed to change. I was worried about the two centre-backs, you know, Martinez, although he's got pretty good stats. He's 5'11". I theorised that it wouldn't be a problem that he's 5'11 because people don't really cross it. And then you'll see the gameplay. Just, I, you couldn't, honestly, you can't make it up. Um... And uh, I did worry that Sule would be a, a bad centre-back just because of his lack of pace, but we would ultimately get Jerome Boateng when the rewards come in. And um, I, asked, I asked in the video yesterday about whether or not we should go with Ronaldo or not, and then I kind of made the decision by myself and went with Ronaldo. A lot of people feel like Messi would have been better than Bale, and picking Ronaldo was a bad choice because I've always spoken about how built, you know, one player with a bad team isn't necessarily the right thing, but I don't actually think I've got a bad team. You know, I've got Ronaldo, Suarez and Bale. That's huge. Um, I've got, um, you know, that, that Ibotta card, that Kovacic card, and uh, right now Renato Sanchez that will hopefully eventually become Vidal as well for this weekend league. And then we've got Alaba at left back. We've got a good right back, solid goalkeeper, the inform. It's just really, there's only like three spots that are really weak. So I wanted to go into the uh, into Division One and just test myself out, see where we were at, see what was what was making uh, you know making what was making me score goals, what was making me concede goals, and just generally how I was playing and, and to make sure that I could go into this weekend league with a positive vibe and a positive uh, you know positive set of results. And it didn't really go uh, very well to plan. For those of you that are in the stream, you'll know I was I was just playing bad. Um, you know I, I get I get in funks and, and it's weird. And, and I'll talk about it a little bit in a second, but. I just I was playing bad FIFA, and it doesn't matter that I had a super team or not. It matters how I'm playing. You know, through the pack only road to glory, we've come to the conclusion that there is a genuine, tiny distinction between players um, on the field compared to the player in control. I'm able to get gold on that pack only road to glory. I finished with 18 wins and five losses, which is a huge, huge return. Um, I think uh, you know. I've shown by beating super teams with those low-end players that team is not the most important thing. And then I go into Division 1 and I start losing games over and over and over because of my mental psyche. It's crazy how much you change as a player off the back of just scoring or conceding or winning or losing. Um, or or in, in the case of this first game, not winning. This first game, a really nice team for my opponent. I guess that's his weekend league team. It's a pretty strong team. Um... I was I was dominating this game. I was scoring goals. I was playing good FIFA. Bale there uh, loses the ball out uh, to Suarez, but gets the ball back. Goes into Cristiano Ronaldo. Ball pops to Suarez. Shoots and scores. And uh, I, I was I was well underway. I was like brilliant. We're playing good, holding possession, creating more chances. But I let myself down defensively, and I couldn't work out if it was because I was playing bad or because the two centre backs that I had just weren't working. But in general, I was playing pretty bad FIFA, and I couldn't get out of that funk. As soon as I didn't win this game, and I conceded in the 90th minute for it to go to 3-3, three, three, uh, as soon as I didn't win this game, something switched upstairs that was just like, oh god, this again. And it took me about eight games to get out of that funk. You know, I, I lost a lot of games in this Division One run. I've I've been relegated from Division One three times before. I don't care to get relegated from Division One. The whole point of coming to Division One instead of going to the daily knockouts is to put myself up against quality players with this team so I can figure out what's wrong. So taking the losses wasn't an issue. Uh, conceding goals wasn't an issue. The the issue for me was playing bad because of my mentality, not because of my team or because of how my opponent's playing. You know, there was two games. <coughs> in here that you'll see today <coughs> where I was just outclassed and that's fine when somebody outclasses you uh, there's not a lot you can do about it other than take you know take uh, lessons from the game learn how to defend that sort of stuff better 
and press on in a future game. Uh, but what I was doing was losing games to dudes that I should have been beating quite comfortably because I was just not concentrating and not focused enough. And, and it's, it's really frustrating when I let myself down like that. And like I said, I don't care to, to get um, relegated in Division 1. But on this occasion, I had lost five games out of uh, eight to get relegated. My final result in Division 1 here was two wins, one draw and five losses. Although I've taken three relegations before today... I've never ever lost five games before. I've usually lost two or three and drawn two or three, or lost two and drawn three. I think there was actually one uh, Division One run where I drew four games and lost two games, like uh, you know, and, and then only won one game or something. And after that, it was just like, okay, I can't, I can't even hold anymore. I've never lost five games in Division One before, which would be fifty percent of the games if I played all ten. But I didn't even play all ten. I only played eight, so I lost five out of eight games. And I was just playing bad and I couldn't figure it out. Was it me? Was it the team? Was it due to the fact that for the first time ever I'm using Ronaldo? I'm using this 94 Suarez and I'm using Bale. They don't have the typical um, kind of precision that I, I'm used to having in my players. I'm used to using uh, quite small, weak, high agility players. And now I'm using Bale and Ronaldo who are strong, tanky players and Suarez very much the same. So... It, you know, does my play style not fit this attack? How can I change it? How can I develop it? How can I get better? And it's very difficult to get better at the game when the mistakes aren't of the team, but they're of the player. You know what I mean? It's, it's very difficult for me to say, okay, Bale was bad for me in these games. He missed some chances. He made some bad passes. He was always in the wrong position. He got edged off the ball too easy. I can improve that because I can just go and take a different player and try someone else. But when I'm sitting here saying... I didn't score that chance with Bale because I tried to shoot a 40-yard long shot with his weak foot or because I tried a finesse sh shot from 20 yards in front of the box where there were four defenders. When it's me that's making the issues, it's very difficult to say this team is good or this team is bad. So even though I played a whole Division 1 run here today, I'm still no more understanding of how good or bad this team is. I still sit here and think this team could be the best team you'll ever use or the worst team you'll ever use. I don't know. One thing I did find as well is that not, not, not consciously, but definitely subconsciously, I was trying too much with Ronaldo. I thought that might be a problem when we got Neymar because of five-star skill moves, and it is definitely becoming a problem with Ronaldo. When I use my BPL team or my EPL team, I don't care who gets the goals. I don't care who scores. The only time I will force-feed goals to someone is through set pieces to Eden Hazard. That's all. That's all I do. I, I give penalties and free kicks to Hazard. Everything else is just how it comes. When I get this team here... The ball goes to Ronaldo, always to Ronaldo. He was scoring, he was assisting, but he was doing that because I was sending the ball to Ronaldo constantly. Um, and when I had the ball with Ronaldo, I wasn't looking to get the ball to anyone else. It was just to Ronaldo. Uh, you know, there were so many times that I could have sweat it to Suarez or to Bale with Ronaldo, but I took a shot. And I've, I've worried about this before. It's crazy how having a better player can make you play worse because you just subconsciously start driving your play through that player it becomes so monotonous and so easy to predict that it might hurt me having Ronaldo just because he's Ronaldo um, but I would rather use this Ronaldo and try and figure out a way to not care about the fact that I've got him and just play a normal game of FIFA and again I'll only do that by playing in Division 1 I won't do that by sitting in the daily knockout tournament slapping kids left right and centre who don't really have a hope against this sort of team and, uh, you know, just boosting my stats and boosting my wins and boosting my ego. I, I would rather have a record that has, you know, a thousand wins and a thousand losses than a record that has 2,000 wins and 300 losses if, if it meant that I was playing better FIFA. You know, the record to me it is important, but it's not everything, you know. Especially this year in FIFA, you can really manipulate a record a lot easier than before because of the daily knockout tournaments. Um, so that's not really what I'm interested in. But... I tried my best. I conceded, so I conceded some nice goals along the way, even to the players that weren't very good. They scored a couple of nice goals. And I do wonder if I conceded some goals because of the defenders. You know, I did use Sule and Ignacio Martinez for a while. Um, I definitely want to improve this team. I definitely want to uh, get the centre-backs changed. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to go with, uh, with Martinez and Varane, um, or Pepe and Varane in, in defence, and maybe Keylor Navas in nets and go for a La Liga side there and literally only use Renato Sanchez and Alaba at left back. But even if then I'm going to do that, I could just go and get Jordi Alba at left back instead and play instead of Kovacic, who I looked at Kovacic's stats. We'll talk about Kovacic in a second, but 
in general, I could I could play like Modric, James Rodriguez, and Nzonzi, Ibora. Like, there's a lot of choices there from La Liga. Um, but uh, in terms of Kovacic, he's got better stats in key areas than than Modric, in my opinion, for for what I need out of a midfielder. Um, but to say that I don't enjoy Modric would be a lie. I think Modric is a fantastic player. But one thing that I noticed a lot during these games here was that his his stamina levels are utterly utterly horrendous he is absolutely dead by like the 55th to the 60th minute of every single game and that's not good enough so on that note i would probably need to go and get modric um and like i say i could go with a midfield of like modric and uh james rodriguez and Nzonzi or ebola and uh go that way i don't know one of the one of the main reasons why i, I turned it into a hybrid rather than just a flat la liga team was actually because of the goalkeepers you know, there, there's there's not so many great goalkeepers in La Liga, and the the better goalkeepers, are Black and Navas, are typically frowned upon. Um, people people just think that they're bad goalkeepers. So I'm I'm sticking by a stigma of other people's opinions, and that's not the right way to play FIFA. I enjoyed Kaylor Navas when I used him. He made as many mistakes as any other goalkeeper I've ever used, but in general, he was pretty good. So I'm I'm now after playing these games and and looking back, and whilst I was editing this footage up and stuff, I sat there and I thought, you know what, I'll probably do. I'll probably get rid of Alaba. I'll probably get rid of that goalkeeper that I bought, the inform for like 70k. The centre-back that I bought, Vok, to there for like 30k. I'll keep Renato Sanchez on the bench. I'll go out, I'll buy Modric, I'll buy Pepe, Varane, Alba, maybe uh, Navas, maybe Oblak. And then with the rewards, we'll see if we can strengthen anywhere else as well. That'll be my plan. And if, if we get something amazing in the rewards, I'll definitely be interested in swapping out Bale for Messi because I've not been enjoying Bale. And, and I know that I enjoy Messi in this game, so I would be interested to swap out Bale for Messi. However, guys, um, talking about the team too much, we've got some comments from you guys. Uh, Theo Bennett says, hey, Nap, do you think EA will release an SBC on Peter Crouch becoming a Premier League 100 or club or Peter Crouch breaking the record for the most headed goals ever in the Premier League? Even though it's late, they did the same thing with Buffon's milestone SBC, and I'd love an SBC Crouch. would love to hear your opinion on the topic. I love the great content. Keep up. Well, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. And um, as a lot of the replies suggested to you, I have talked about this before, but this, this comment had a, a you know considerable number of thumbs up. And um, because of that, I know that I talked about this a long time ago, and there are a lot of new viewers on the series and on the channel since then. So I'll mention it again. That I don't think they'll do it for something as low rated as 100 goals or something like that for Peter Crouch. Because once they open that can, they then have to follow the trend. So at that point, every player ever that gets 100 goals will now have a, an SBC card. Every player in every league ever that does anything of even semi-notable notori notoriety, they will have to give an SBC. And what that will do is it will just cause a flood of too many SBCs. And I'm all for SBCs, right? But Walcott just scored his 100th goal. Crouch broke two records there. We've seen other record breaker cards not get rewarded. Uh, you know, I think one player recently just played 500 games for a club. They, they can't do it for... It has to be like a near unachievable milestone, in my opinion, for them to turn it into an SBC. Otherwise, you'll just see every single card ever, people saying... Oh, he deserves an SBC because this guy got one for something basically the same. And it, like, it probably genuinely would ruin the game. Matt Ames says, this isn't my idea. I saw someone else on a different video comment it, but I thought it was a great idea. Once you played over 100 games with one player, that player should get some kind of special loyalty, giving them three extra chemistry points. This would help give the likes of Giovinco, uh, Man of the Match, Sal, etc. and more uncommon players onto full chem. And I talked about this on my pack account uh, uh, earlier today, and I'll, I'll discuss it here again. I agree. I, I would love to see. I would love to see the chemistry system completely changed. Anyway, I don't think it's an effective system. I don't think it represents what ultimate team should be about. I think to to build your ultimate team, um, you should have the freedom to do what you want. And a, 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 there seems to be a mixed bag. A lot of people's response to that seems to be, "Oh, well, then you're just going to see the same sweaty teams all the time." You already see the same sweaty teams all the time. That's my argument to that. You know what I mean? Buy small in De Gea. That's as sweaty as you can get. Kyle Walker, bang, he fits in there. That defence is just perfect chem no matter what team or formation you play him into. Like, the sweat is already there. Renato Sanchez, and Golo Kante, Anthony Martial. Like, all these sweaty players, they're always in the same teams regardless of chemistry. So, when you remove chemistry, it opens up the opportunity for people to use players that they wouldn't traditionally use. 
So if EA are unwilling or don't have the capabilities to remove the chemistry system without like completely overhauling the game, which might just be an impossible task for them at this, sta this stage, why not? This is what I theorise. This is my opinion. My opinion, opinion number one is they should have informed managers which give two bonus chemistry points instead of one bonus chemistry point. Straight away, you can get a player on a bonus chemistry point no matter what, right? My second opinion is that we right now get, after 10 games, one chemistry point for loyalty. I think after 25 games, we should get a second point. After 50 games, a third point. And after 100 games, a fourth point. So that way, if you have the manager chem and loyalty... And the four bonus points for 100 games, you can get six points on a player before you even consider anything. And then when they go into the right position, they get an extra two points. So you can actually get eight points on a player if they have no links at all. I think that would be a really good way to develop chemistry right now. To allow people, like you say, to use Man of the Match Sal or, you know, that informed Schneider who's an absolutely sensational card. Or to, to build like, you know, a full BPL team, but okay, you don't like the left backs available in the BPL team. So I'm going to put Jordi Alba in there. I'll, I'll link him up with maybe Cesc Fabregas or maybe just leave him there on his own. Just Jordi Alba with no links, but on AKM. You know, like, I, I think um, I think that, that would be, I think it would be a good idea. Carl McGee says, do you not find FIFA boring right now? I'm struggling to have fun and there is nothing to do. I love FIFA now, dude. Last year, mo most years in FIFA, the first sort of like week or two, I'll play 100 games, maybe 150 games. And I'll, because it's a new game, I'll be like, man, I love this game. I love this. I can't get enough of this. And then I'll get burnt out so quick because there's nothing. This year in FIFA, with SBCs, with all the promotions that EA are doing, there is very rarely nothing to do. The daily knockout tournaments are, although I, I agree there should be a regular, like, standard tournament that's just there all the time, the daily knockouts are great. Twi twice a week you get tournaments that offer you rewards that you don't usually get. You get the SBCs that are, you know we've never had before. There are upgrades. There are there's there's new man of the match cards. There's everything. We're seeing so much more this year. I don't know how you can get bored of FIFA. Um, Thomas Atherton Barnes says, "What's your corner techniques? Struggling to score." Well, my my corner technique tends to be give the ball away needlessly, get counted on, and concede. That that seems to be like my go-to corner technique, really, right? Um, but there, there's there's like there's three techniques that seem to be pretty relevant right now. Number one is play it short, try and get it into the box and score a goal that way. Number two is the near post cross to the to the guy who's standing at the near post, hopefully for the header. And number three seems to just throw it in in or around the penalty spot and see if you can get a header on it. Um, all three of them are very very erratic in their effectiveness, and more often than not, I concede counters, not necessarily goals, but definitely I concede counters. Um, from corners and set pieces more than I don't. I would genuinely say that if, if, if let's say I've had a thousand corners in FIFA 17, I would genuinely be under the impression that at least 500 of those resulted in opportunities for my opponent to score rather than an opportunity for me to score. That shouldn't be how it works, but it is. Seem Divine says, Hey Nep, my man, I just wanted to ask, at the end of the year, what are you planning to do with this account? Are you going to blow all your money on packs? Love from Ireland. Probably not, dude. I'll probably just leave it. Uh, just much like the uh, last account, like last year's account, it's, it's just sat there. No, there's nothing happening to it. All the players are still there. The stats, the records, it's all still there. They're just sitting there. They're sitting there doing nothing. And this, this account will probably be the same. It'll probably just sit there and, and do absolutely nothing. Um, Paul says, Messi above Bale. Um, you know, your opinion and everything. I don't necessarily disagree, but uh, I know a lot of people do love Bale this year. Um, me personally, I've, I've struggled with him. He hasn't really done much for me. Last year, he was one of my favourite players in the game, hands down, no question about it. The year before, very much the same. In fact, for the last three years, Gareth Bale has been an absolute commodity in my teams. This year, again, I, I feel like I prefer the low centre of gravity, high agility, small players. They just seem to fit my, my playstyle a little bit better. So um, on that note, for me personally, and, and seemingly for you, I do think that Bale uh, might have to be changed for Messi as quick as possible. Declan Kelly says, Nep, just wondering if you think it's a good idea to invest in MLS players for one of next week's requirements for the daily knockout. Um, yes and no. I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea, but the problem is everyone now has, has become so wise to the early investment and the early uh, kind of selling that it actually crashes that market in itself. You know, people become so wise to the SBCs that they just prepared themselves. Bronze pack method. When this game first started and a brand new SBC came out that required bronze players, 
those players would be near extinct and at 10,000 coins for all of them most of the time. Now, because everyone's got a club full of bronze and silver cards, when an SBC drops or when a team requirement like this daily knockout tournament for the MLS stuff drops, the problem you have is everybody that has saved these cards has been waiting for this. They all dump them at the same time, which actually drives the price down. Um, so you may well make profit. You know, everyone did it with the 83 and the 84 investing. I made like 300,000 coins off of that for one promotion. And then the next promotion, I decided not to invest in them because I was worried that people had overinvested, would dump and it would crash the market. Lo and behold, they only went up by about 10 or 12% rather than by about the 100% that they initially went up by. So it's never a bad idea to invest super early to the point where it's going to be cheap. But I would also say... Um, you like there's more risk now because there's more people doing exactly what you're doing there's more people wise to the fact that the early bird catches the worm and that could be problematic for you in the long run and it could just eat into your profit margins in the long run um however you know take your gut instinct on board tell whatever your whatever your gut is saying you should do just do that and if you lose coins who cares man it's, it's just coins you know what i mean it's, it's not the end of the world as long as you've still got a usable team a playable team doesn't really make any difference. This was the uh, the final game for me, guys. The final nail in the coffin. Uh, this guy, just he deserved the win. He was far better than me. He scored three fantastic goals. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a, a, a destructive way to get relegated down into v Division 2. However, we got relegated. He thoroughly deserved that win. And for me, uh, that, that was, uh, that was the, the last straw for me in getting angry. I, I went into Division 2 after that and started winning games. But you'll see that in the next episode. But yeah, uh, this, guys, is going to be the end of the episode. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.